Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam, and today we will learn about glioblastoma on MRI. We will only look at T1 and T1 contrast images. Glioblastoma is a WHO grade 4 astrocytoma, the most aggressive primary brain tumor. MRI is the key imaging modality for its diagnosis and characterization. Today, we will only focus on T1 and T1 contrast images of this tumor and study about other sequences in a separate video. For easier understanding, we will compare the glioblastoma images with images of the normal brain. These are images in the axial plane. In a T1 weighted image, the tissues with high fat content appear bright while water-containing tissues appear dark. The lateral ventricles appear dark, or hypointense, because they contain cerebrospinal fluid. The inner white matter appears bright, or hyperintense, because it has high myelin content, which is fat content, and the outer gray matter appears darker than the inner white matter. The gray matter has less fat content, it actually appears gray in T1 images. The bones appear black in T1 images. There is no MR signal. The image on the right shows a mass in the left side of the brain. This was a glioblastoma. A glioblastoma usually appears hypointense or isointense to the white matter in a T1 weighted image. This mass is hypointense. You can see that it is darker than the white matter. Also, the mass is large and causes a mass effect. Mass effect refers to the compression of nearby structures due to the mass. The lateral ventricles are compressed and displaced. This mass effect is significant enough to cause a midline shift. This is the midline of the brain, and you can see a rightward displacement of it due to mass effect. This is another case of a glioblastoma. The mass is present in the right parietal lobe. It also appears hypointense to the white matter. There are cystic and necrotic areas within the mass. A midline shift is also present in this case. Effacement of sulci refers to the loss of grooves that we normally see in a normal brain. These are the grooves, the sulci, but here they have disappeared. These little areas outside the mass are edema. These are coronal images of the brain. These are the left and right parietal lobes. And these are the left and right temporal lobes. In the right image, a mass is present in the left temporal lobe. It is hypointense to the white matter. It is causing a mass effect and midline shift. Ventricular compression is noted. Diagnosis on MRI is not made by studying one sequence alone because many lesions appear similar in one sequence. So the imaging findings are always studied in multiple sequences. We are taking this step by step. Now we will look at T1 contrast images. T1 contrast images are very helpful in the diagnosis of glioblastoma. They have very specific findings. We will study T2 and other sequences later on. In this T1 contrast image, an irregular shaped heterogeneous mass is present. Apart from the irregular shape and heterogeneity, a glioblastoma will have two distinct features in a T1 contrast image. The mass will have a bright enhancing peripheral rim and a hypointense dark central necrotic core. The enhancing rim is often heterogeneous and irregular, differentiating it from smooth rings seen in abscesses or metastases. 
This glioblastoma involves the subventricular zone. Its irregular and heterogeneous appearance indicates that it is a malignant infiltrating lesion. Mild midline shift is also noted. In this case, the peripheral enhancement is very strong. The enhancement is irregular and surrounds a hypointense central necrotic core. The central core will not show enhancement because of cystic necrosis. Here is another T1 contrast enhanced image. We see the typical features of glioblastoma in this image. An irregularly shaped heterogeneous mass with peripheral enhancement and a hypointense central necrotic core. These dark gray colored areas near the mass are edema. There is effacement of the sulci. Mass effect has led to ventricular compression and a midline shift. This is also another case of glioblastoma. An irregularly shaped mass is present in the frontal lobe. There is a strong heterogeneous peripheral enhancement surrounding a dark, hypointense central core. Edema can also be noted near the mass. This glioblastoma is similar to the one we saw earlier. It is an irregularly shaped mass with peripheral enhancement with a hypointense central core in a T1 contrast image. In this case, there are multiple lesions in the brain. This was diagnosed as glioblastoma. This mass is enhanced, but it does have a small hypointense core. This lesion has peripheral enhancement and a hypointense central core. This lesion is more heterogeneous but also has peripheral enhancement and a hypointense central core. This is a glioblastoma in the left parietal lobe. This mass has a large heterogeneous enhancing part, but it also has specific features. Peripheral enhancement and a hypointense central core in a T1 contrast image. This is a coronal image showing a glioblastoma near the thalamus. It has peripheral enhancement and a hypointense central core. Mass effect is noted. The lateral ventricle is compressed. Now we will look at some sagittal images of the brain. In this image, the mass is mostly heterogeneous, but we can still notice peripheral enhancement and a hypointense central core. Here is another sagittal image showing a glioblastoma in a contrast enhanced T1 image. There is a strong peripheral enhancement with a dark central core. Edema is also noted around the mass, appearing as dark gray areas. Some glioblastomas can have a predominantly enhancing appearance in a T1 contrast enhanced image with a small hypointense central core. Its irregular contours indicate that it is an infiltrating aggressive lesion. Edema is also present. T1 contrast enhanced images are very helpful in the diagnosis of glioblastomas, but it becomes more accurate when multiple sequences are studied, especially T2 and flare sequences. We will study them separately. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more imaging videos.